to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ to the elders at ephesus the apostle paul encouraged them shepherd or oversee the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. When we think about the Lord's church, oftentimes the question is raised, is the church essential to salvation? Must I be a member of the church that you read about in the Bible to go to heaven? Is it something I must be a part of to be right with God? This is the question that we hope to look to God's Word to give the answer to today. But as always, we're so thankful that you've joined us for our broadcast today. We always encourage our visitors to check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com. We have a host of online Bible study tools as well as video and audio that you can access on the internet. If you've got a Bible question, don't hesitate to write us or email us with those questions. We'll give the contact information at the end of this broadcast. And friend, we always encourage our listeners, please visit the Church of Christ in your area. You'll find members of the Lord's body who have a love for souls and want to exalt the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in everything they say and do. Today we're considering a, a very serious question that many people shy away from. Is the church of the Bible essential to salvation? Meaning, must I be a member of the Lord's church, the New Testament church, to go to heaven? Now, we begin by asking, why is this such an important topic? Well, friend, we live in a day and age where there are so many people who want to be definitively indefinite. That is, they don't want there to be anything definite to hang on to. They want every, everything to be kind of objective and nebulous, much like in the days of Judges. Judges 21 verse 25, every man wanted to do that which was right in his own eyes. So many people will tell us today, if you really want to draw people in, if you really want to pe get people in the church, don't have any definite standards that you push. Well, friend, does the Bible, we're asking today, does the Bible teach that we need to be de definitively indefinite on the church, that everything's just kind of up in the air and that it doesn't matter? Of course, the answer to that is a resounding no. God does have clear teaching on His church. This is also an important topic because there is a, a pervasive mindset that says, give me Christ, but not the church. We want Jesus, but not religion, as though the two were somehow inseparable. Friend, do people really understand, biblically speaking, what they're asking for when they ask for Christ, not the church? Do they not realize that they're asking for a decapitated Savior? Now, let me illustrate. Ephesians 1, verses 22 and 23. Jesus is the head of His church, which is His body. Can you separate Christ from the church about as well as you could separate a head from a body? How well would that work? Well, it wouldn't work good at all. And yet the mindset is something that pervades or prevails in our society today. Friend, this is also a very serious subject because there's a lot of teaching and preaching that is watered down and so many people are afraid of offending folks on this subject that sometimes we don't really address it as we ought. Our responsibility is simply to preach the Word, 
to be instant in season and out of season, to reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Paul told Timothy, here's why. The time is coming when they'll not want that. They'll heap up teachers at their own desires who've got itching ears, want to be tickled, and they'll t guide them away from the truth. We need to be concerned with pleasing God, with giving a Bible answer on this subject, and letting God speak on the matter. And so on such a vital subject, we want to speak with great clarity. And let's let the Lord's church once again be distinct on this subject. We want to let the whole counsel of God be considered, Acts 20 verse 27, and in speaking the truth, let's realize we don't become someone's enemy. Paul asked, have I become your enemy because I tell you the truth? And so friend, we affirm today from the scriptures that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, the church you read about in your New Testament, the church of the Lord, is indeed essential to salvation. I want you to think about it this way for just a moment. Ask yourself these questions. Is it essential that Jesus Christ die for and by the church with His own blood? Acts 20 verse 28. Remember the words of Paul? Paul encouraged the elders in Ephesus. I want you to watch out, oversee the flock, uh, the church of the Lord, which He, Christ, purchased with His own blood. Friend, Jesus' blood purchased the church. Are we saying that Jesus purchased something non-essential that wasn't important? Did Jesus die for something? that it really doesn't matter whether you're a member of or not? Realize this, it is the body that is the saved. Ephesians 5 verse number 25, Paul encouraged husbands to love their wives as Christ loved the church, died for Him, and it is where the saved, it is the body of the saved. Is that place something that's just an option? Is that something that's unnecessary? Did Jesus purchase a saved people who really are not important? Do you see the importance of the church? Think about it this way. The body of that saved people, my friends, is the church. Ephesians 1, verses 22 and 23, Jesus is head of the church, which is His body. If the body is the saved and the church is the body, then, friend, the church is the saved people. It's the called out. And, friends, surely it is not at all something that is unnecessary, non-essential in today's day and age. And then realize this, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, promised to save His church and that all other religious organizations of men would be destroyed on the final day. Matthew 15, verse 13, Jesus said, Leave them alone. They're blind leaders of the blind. If the blind lead the blind, they'll both fall into the ditch. Jesus clearly taught in that passage that that which Christ did not build, did not own, would be burned up in the last day. Every tree which my Father has not planted will be cut down and thrown into the fire. Now I know Jesus wasn't talking necessarily about trees, for in the very next breath He says, they are blind leaders of the blind. Religious organizations of men that are not established by Christ will not stand. But the good news is, His church, that which is essential to be a member of, to be saved, will stand. And thus, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is essential to salvation. Now, as we think about this idea of the church being essential, let's realize, friend, that everybody draws a line somewhere on that which is essential to salvation. For example, if we ask today, is faith in Jesus essential to salvation? Well, there's a lot of folks who are going to say definitively. Draw a line in the sand. If you don't have faith, you cannot be saved. And the Scripture affirms that. Hebrews 11, verse 6. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. For he that comes to Him must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Is grace essential to salvation? Again, if you were to ask a host of religious people, must you have grace to be saved? The majority would draw a line and say, absolutely. 
and rightly so. By grace are you saved. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 8. If we were to ask people today, religious people, is repentance essential to salvation? Must you repent of sin to be saved? The majority would say, well, sure. And rightly so again. Luke 13, 3, Jesus said, Unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Is baptism essential? Not as many people would agree, but friend, the Scripture affirms that it is. Jesus said, He that believes and is baptized will be saved. Peter said, Baptism does now also save us. And so, if 1 Peter 3, 21 and Acts chapter 2, verse number 38. If we're all going to draw a line, whether it be faith, grace, repentance, why don't we let God tell us where that line is? Why not let God tell us if the church is indeed essential to salvation? And so let's take just a few moments and let's consider this idea that the church is essential looking to the Scriptures. Let me ask it this way. How can I know the church is essential to salvation. Well, friend, is it the case, would you agree that it's the case that preaching Christ is essential to salvation? Well, majority are going to say, sure. If people don't hear about Christ, if they don't know about Him, if they never heard of Jesus, He's the way, the truth, and the life, and without Christ you cannot be saved. And so they're going to affirm, yes, preaching Christ is essential to salvation. Let me give you an example. I want you to open your Bible with me to Acts chapter 8 for just a moment. And I want to look at an example of what it really means to preach Christ. And let's see, is the church essential in that message? Acts chapter 8. I want you to notice what the Bible says. Philip is in the area of Samaria and the Bible simply records in Acts chapter 8 verse number 5, then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. Now, we've all agreed people have got to hear about Christ to be saved, but what does it mean to preach Christ? Whatever Philip preached has got to be essential, right? That's preaching Christ. Would you look in Acts chapter 8, verse number 12? The Bible says, but when they believe Philip, watch this, he's already told us he's preaching about Christ. When they believe Philip, as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Friend, what does it mean to preach Christ? Well, let's let the Scripture tell us. As they believed the things he preached concerning the kingdom and the authority or name of Jesus, men and women were baptized. Preaching Christ is essential. Preaching Christ is includes preaching the church. Therefore, the church is essential to salvation. Now, just so we understand, let's realize that the church and the kingdom in the New Testament are one and the same. Jesus said in Mark 9 verse 1 to some of His disciples standing there today, that day, you will not taste death until you see the kingdom present with power. So Jesus promised His disciples would see the kingdom. Did that happen? Matthew 16, verses 18 and 19, Jesus said to Peter, I'll build my church. I'm going to give to you the keys of the kingdom. Church and the kingdom are one and the same in Scripture. Acts 2, verse 47, did it happen? The Lord added to the church daily. Those are being saved. And so the kingdom is the church. Now remember again, preaching Christ is essential. Preaching Christ includes preaching the church, Acts 8, verse 12. Therefore, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, the kingdom, is essential to salvation. Let's look at it this way then. The church is essential because when Christ comes, He'll save His people and take them home to live with Him. Nobody denies the idea that on that final day, when Christ comes back, He's going to collect His own and they're going to go to be with Him and God in heaven. 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 through 18, the Bible says there'll be a shout. We'll hear the voice of an archangel, the trumpet of God. The dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet them in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. At the second coming, the saved are going home with Christ. Those 
whom Christ will take home with Him are in the church. I want you to notice your Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Look in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 with me, and I want you to see that those people who are going home to be with God are in a specific place that necessarily must be essential to salvation. Notice verse 24. Then comes the end. Again, talking about the coming of Christ. Then comes the end when He, Jesus, delivers the kingdom to God the Father when He puts an end to all rule, all authority, and power. Now, Jesus is coming to save His own. When He comes, He will take the kingdom and deliver it to the Father, therefore, at the coming of Christ. Those in the church are those who are going home to live with God forever. Friend, I cannot get around the idea that the kingdom, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is the essential place one must be either in leaving this life and preparing for the second coming or if we're here when Christ comes again. There is a specific place, specific location, and those people are the ones who are going to live with God forever. Therefore, the church is indeed essential to salvation. Then think about it with me this way. The church is essential to salvation because the Scriptures teach one's name must be on God's divine record to be saved. Let me illustrate from Revelation chapter 17, and I want you to listen to what the Bible says concerning this in verse number 8. The Bible says, verse number 8 of Revelation 17, The beast that you saw was and is not and will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to perdition. Now notice, and those who dwell in the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they see the beast that was and is not and yet is. I understand we've got apocalyptic things happening here, things of world events, no doubt, of the first century, but here's what I want you to key in on. The ones whose names were not written in the book of life. Those are the ones who lived in, in terror and shuddered at this event. Not Christians. Why? Because those whose names were recorded in the book of life those are the saved. Philippians 4 verse 3, Paul said, along with Clement and all the others who had their names written in the book of life. To go to heaven, you must have your name in God's divine record of the saved in the book of life. The scriptures teach that. Revelation 13, 8. Revelation 17, 8. Philippians 4 verse 3. Revelation 3 verses 4 and 5. Now, notice this. If that's the case, then friend, those in the church are the ones who have their names registered in heaven. Let me again direct your attention to the Scriptures. Would you look in Hebrews chapter 12, and I want you to notice what the Bible says in verse number 23. Look beginning actually in Hebrews 12 verse 22. The Bible says, But you will come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, to the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, now watch verse 23, to the general assembly, don't miss this word, and church of the firstborn, watch this, who are registered in heaven to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect. What do I know about the church? Listen carefully now. You've got to have your name written in God's book of life to be saved. Those in the church of the firstborn, firstborn being Jesus Christ, Colossians 1 verses 15 through 18, are the ones who have their names registered in heaven. Well, we kind of understand this in everyday life. Let's say, for example, that you and your family are going on a journey. You're going on vacation and you're going to some city in a couple of weeks, maybe a month before, you call and you make reservations at the Holiday Inn. You give them your credit card, they write your name down, you've got a room, slot of room scheduled and reserved for a certain date. What happens when you get to that motel? You walk up to the front desk, you tell the clerk, I have a set of rooms reserved, my name is, and you give them your name, and they say, ah oh, yes, right here, we've got your reservation. Here's the key, welcome to the hotel. Now friend, I want you to think about it this way. You've got to have your name written in the book of life. 
those in the church of the firstborn are the ones who are registered. They're the ones who have their name written in the book of life, and they're the ones who are registered in heaven. Therefore, the church is indeed essential to salvation. Friend, we also emphasize that the church is essential to salvation because if Christ is the head of the church, and He is, Ephesians 1 verses 22 and 23, He is the head of the church, which is His body, the firstborn over all things from the dead. If Christ is the head of the church, and if the, the church is the body, Colossians 3 verse 15, you are called into one body, and be ye thankful. Ephesians 1, and 23, He's the head of the body, which is the church. There is but one body. Ephesians 4 verse 4, and so we've got Christ as the head. We've got the church as the body. There's just one body. Friend, therefore to say Christ, not the church, is to actually decapitate the spiritual head and body of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Is the church essential? Is a head being attached to a body essential? Well, that's a given. A body cannot function with a head. A head cannot function without a body. If one were decapitated from the other, it'd be of no use. Are both essential? Absolutely. That's why Paul said in Acts 20, verse 28, shepherd the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. Friend, if the two are uniquely tied together, inseparably tied together, as a head and a body are, and if Jesus' own blood purchased the church, how can one conclude the church is not essential? That conclusion cannot be reached from Scripture. That conclusion often is based on a mentality that doesn't want guidelines and rules and, and, and things to follow and, and somebody who's going to watch out, watch over somebody else's soul and accountability. It often comes down to those things and not really aligning one's will with the will of Almighty God. Now, let me illustrate this idea another way. Is the church essential to salvation? Sure it is, and you can see that in God's plan to save. For example, the Bible teaches that Christ came to save the lost. Luke chapter 19, verse 10, Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. John 1, verse 29, as John saw Jesus approaching, he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. You'll call His name Jesus. He'll save His people from their sins. Matthew 1, verses 19 through 21. And so, Christ came to save the lost. The saved are in the church. Ephesians 5, verse 25, He has created that body that is purified, sanctified, and the saved are in the body of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, Christ came to save the church. The body is the saved. Therefore, one must be in the body to be saved. Friend, we act like, and by we, I mean sometimes in the religious world, we act like these are two separate events. And this is a big part of the problem. We act like these are two separate events. One is saved, and then one joins a church later. In Scripture, that's not how it happens. Did you know they occur at the exact same moment in time? Being saved and being added to the church happen at the same moment. Let me illustrate again. Acts 2, verse 38, Peter preaches the word. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Acts 2, verses 41 through 47, those who gladly received His word were baptized. And verse 47 says, And the Lord added to the church daily. Those are being saved. When one obeys the gospel and submits to Jesus Christ, hears about Christ and His church, when he obeys that gospel, he's automatically added to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so God's plan of salvation uniquely ties into the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we mention this for you to consider. For in the church is also essential to salvation because if salvation's in Christ and one, when one gets in Christ, he gets in the church. You can't separate those two ideas. Let me illustrate. 
salvation is indeed in Christ. 2 Timothy 1 verse 10, Paul said that we are to give glory to God for the salvation that is found in Christ Jesus. So where's salvation at? It's in Christ, okay? How do I get into Christ? Galatians 3.27 says, As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. And so salvation is in Christ. When I'm baptized, I'm baptized into Christ. Now watch this. When I'm baptized, what am I baptized into? 1 Corinthians 12.13 By one Spirit we're all baptized into one body. If salvation's in Christ, and if being baptized is how I get into Christ, and if at that same time being baptized is also I'm added to the body, then friend, you cannot separate the two ideas. Salvation's in the church because when I submit to God, God in heaven adds my name to the book of life. I am added as a member of His body. I become a New Testament Christian, a member of the Lord's church. And thus it indeed is essential to salvation. I want to be where God's people are supposed to be when Christ comes. I want to give honor to God in the church that He built. The glory be to God in the church. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. And so friend, we ask you to consider seriously. We ask you to consider in view of your own soul. Are you a member of the Lord's church? Friend, we want you to know today that the things we say, we say it of kindness and love and, and sincerity for lost souls. Must one be a member of the Lord's church to be saved? The biblical answer is a resounding yes. And friend, if you're not, we urge you, we, we plead with you, we beg you, won't you obey the gospel? Let God add you to His church, the church of Christ, and there live faithfully unto death. If you've heard the Word, Romans 10, 17. You believe that Jesus is God's Son, John 8, 24. You'd be willing to repent of sin and confess His name before men. Luke 13, 3, Romans 10, verse 10. Would you be immersed in water so that the Lord can add you to His church? Acts 2, verse 38, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13. May God bless us as we strive to be members of the one body of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form, or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905, or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111.